الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله from some of the names of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah in which they were referred to throughout history that come from Nusus, meaning text of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that's the difference between Ahl Sunnah and many of the other groups and sects is that they take their name their name and their characteristics from the Nasus, from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not to a particular leader that's why we don't refer to ourselves as Wahhabiya or uh, Hanabila necessarily or Maturidiya or Asha'ira or other groups and sects or Hururiya like the Khawarij or the various Su Sufi uh, Turk but rather Ahlul Sunnah their names and the way they were referenced by Ahlul Sunnah, by Ahlul Khair, by Ahlul Iman comes from the Nasus, comes from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and throughout history one of the names that Ahlul Sunnah was referred to and ref uh, in the past was Taifatul Mansura and this goes back to the hadith that we spoke about in one of the uh, last sittings in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said La tazal taifatun min ummati zahirin ala al-haq la yadurruhum man khalafuhum wa la man man khadaluhum hatta tukum as-sa'ah the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there won't cease to be a group from my nation that is on the truth. La yadurruhum man khalifum. No one who, who, those who differ with them or disagree with them or go against them will not harm them. They will not be harmed by those who disagree or go against them. La yadurruhum man khalifum wala man khadalahum hatta tukum as Until the hour is established, wuhum zahirun. And that they will be firm upon the haqq. And in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said La tazal ta'ifa La tazal ta'ifa tum min ummati Zahirin ala haq So From this hadith We see the text the left, the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said La Tazel Ta'ifa He used the term, the terminology Ta'ifa Ta'ifa meaning group Meaning that there would be a group And this goes back to the other Nasus There would be a group A sect That is saved And they're a sect in a group because they're the Asl Of the Jama'ah They're not a sect in a group that is split From the main body of Muslims but rather they themselves make up the origin of what the Muslims are supposed to be, up, be upon which is the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so this comes from the Hadith Ruahu Muslim from the Hadith uh, Thoban Radiyallahu Ta'ala Anhu Qal Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين ظاهرين على الحق لا يضرهم من خذلهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم كذلك And so this nas what the scholars derive from this text is that name because they refer to the concept of the Hur, which is mentioned in the hadith because the Prophet Sallallahu said La tazal ta'ifatun min ummati zahirin ala haq zahirin the term zahir here 
uh, the scholars, they refer to it as a dhuhur bi ma'ana al-nasr ala adu wa qahrahu kama thabata fi ba'da turk al-hadith. So, a dhuhur here, it refers to being assisted. Mansurun. Being supported. And that is why the text, or from this text, the scholar said, Ta'ifa al-Mansura, the saved sect or saved group. Because Ta'ifa, that refers to a group, and the Hur, it refers to the term an-Nasr, that, that it's supported or something that's helped and aided. And that's why they are the aided or saved sect. And saved, that comes from other ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, such as the hadith of iftiraq, where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, iftarakatil yahud ala itta wa sa'in firqa ila akhra hadith. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the Jews would break into 71 sects the Christians into 72 sects, my Ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And then the companions asked, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon, al -yom. So that means that one group was saved from the fire. So that's why they say, a ta'ifa to mansura wa a ta'ifa you know, the, the saved, and also referred to as the saved sects. What are they saved sect? What are they saved from? They're saved from the Nar. And again, as we mentioned prior to this, that when we say saved from the fire, that doesn't mean every ifrad, every individual, you know, that they're not going, that they won't taste any hellfire, or they won't fall into any bid'ah or anything like this. No, Islam doesn't have that concept. But rather, it means that that is the tariqah, that is the path. The path is the path of Ahl Sunnah. And that's why we say we traverse, we strive to traverse the path of the Salaf. Who you cannot say I'm saved and run around like some of the other groups outside of Islam claim to have salvation. But rather the Muslims believe they're between hope and fear. Hope for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their many sins that they commit and fear of his punishments subhanahu wa ta'ala their hope that that Allah will save them from the fire and the punishment and accept their deeds and so this is a different concept that Ahl Sunnah has compared to some of the groups of deviation and some of the uh, groups of bid'ah mukaffara those who are not even Muslim Aslam another one of the names of Ahl Sunnah throughout time uh, is for example a, a, a salaf and we've talked about this prior to this that a salaf when we say the salaf as salih we say the the pious predecessors that we are trying to follow the pious predecessors we are trying to follow the tariqa the path of the salaf, uh, salaf as salih and the salaf that refers to the first three generations. That means the generation of the Prophet wasallam, and then those who came after them and those who came after them, meaning the Sahaba wa Tabi'een wa Tiba'a Tabi'een. That is who makes up the asl, the origin of the salaf, and the asl of the jama'ah, and the asl of Ahl Sunnah. The asl of the jama'ah is what the Sahaba, is what was the Sahaba and what they were upon. And that goes back to the hadith that we mentioned uh, and, and also uh, uh, another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, It can be sunnati wa sunnati khulafa rashidin mahdiin. It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the uh, rightly guided khulafa rashidin al mahdiin. And so from that, that shows us that the Sahaba make up the asl of the jama'ah and the asl of what we're supposed to be upon. This is why adhering to the madhab of the Salaf has such a high status. And this goes back to the hadith of the Prophet 
where he sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam said khayran nas qarni thumma ladhina yulunuhum thumma ladhina yulunuhum the best people is those of my generation then those who follow them then those who follow them so this shows us the esteem of the salaf because the prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam himself salawatu rabbi wa sallam wa alayhi said the best people are those of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. So he وسلم, said that they're the best people. So that is why it has such a, uh, it's held even by Ahl Bid'ah that the term Salaf, no one speaks ill about necessarily that terminology of Salaf, but where they differ is about using that in contemporary times and referring to yourself as Salafi, as a descriptor. And so this is where you have a different of views uh, with regards to the usage of that terminology. And when people use that terminology, for example, if I say I'm Salafi, that does not mean I'm from the Salaf, and that's not what I'm saying. What, it, it, what you are saying and claiming is that you this is your understanding of Islam, where you take from. That is your source uh, of uh, interpretive discourse on how to understand the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you are going back to those interpretations instead of an Imam in contemporary time who comes up with his own views and says, hey, we're now American Muslims, let's make a new interpretive discourse for the Book of Allah, or let's uh, negate the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or an imam in France or an imam in Sweden or an imam in Ethiopia that they come up with a new way of uh, interpreting the uh, the Quran and or the Sunnah and this is what distinguishes Ahl Sunnah from a lot of those other groups and sects even from the past is that they had a different asal of their interpretive discourse and this comes with for example Ahl Kalam and that includes all the groups from the Jahmiya, the Ma'tazila, the Kulabiya, the Ashaira, the Maturidiya, and they have different levels of deviation. They're not all the same. Some have more agreements, like Ashari's, uh, have more in common with Ahl Sunnah than a lot of those other sects. And uh, that's in general. However, even amongst them, there's so many differences and so many sects. As the Prophet said, Oh, as the Prophet وسلم, said, If Tarakatil Yahud are the Eto was of Ain Firka, with Tarakat and Nasala, Natain was of Ain Firka, if Taraku, with Taraku, have the Umma Alatalata was of Ain Firka, that this Umma would break into 73 sects. And some of the Athar or narrations of the Salaf pertaining to this, <coughs> uh, Imam Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said in regard to this hadith that we mentioned the best people those people of my generation then those who follow them then those who follow them he said commenting about this he said so that's very important for our understanding of Islam he said that the madhab of the salaf the way of the salaf doesn't contain anything except that it's the truth meaning that it is only the truth it's not a new madhab or minhaj and there is no nux no uh, shortcomings in that minhaj in that methodology because it is the methodology that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us it is the methodology of those who the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said there won't cease to be a group of my nation that's on the truth they are the same ones the Prophet ﷺ said, <coughs> Best people are my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Because he ﷺ said that they're the best generation. So that's why, if the, them being the best generation, that means they are the most adherent to the haq. They, what they're upon is the truth. That is before the distortions, before the deviations, and as a refutation and rejection of bid'ah and wa'ahlihi and the people of innovation. So very important to have this understanding and it's a beautiful statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Some of the Salaf also mention uh, or another statement of Shaykh al-Islam 
he said laysa fil aql as-sarih wala fi shay'in min naql sahih ma yujib mukhalif at-tariqa salafiya aslan he said there isn't a thing from a real a truly sound intellect a person of truly sound intellect uh, nor from sound nasus sound textual nasus that necessitates going against or differing with the path of salafia so that meaning that the path of salafia is what a person of sound intellectual capacity as far as far following islam would come to uh as as their source to follow the salaf that who would think to want to follow a path other than the ones who the revelation was revealed amongst them why would you turn to another interpretation of islam or another origin of how to understand the text and derive rulings other than what those people who were around the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were upon, which is the Asl of the Salaf and the, uh, the Ru'us al Jama'ah or the heads of the Jama'ah, which was the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu So therefore, an, an, an Aql Salim, you know, a healthy intellectual sound uh, intellect and, and authentic Nasus do not go against the Salafi Minhaj because the Salafi Minhaj is made up of that. The Salafi Salafiya is Qala Allah wa Qala Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa Qala Salaf. You know, what did the Salaf say about this? So that gives us our assas, that's our foundation that we stand upon. And that's how we understand Islam and how we practice Islam. And that's very important because it's easy to say that on our tongues, but we have to also look at what we're practicing. And even what we hear from a, a scholar, it has to be put on that scale because perhaps the scholar may be known for Salafiyyah, but he can error in something. He can make a new principle, a new qaida, and this happens. This happens. We all fall in. Kulu yusibu yukhti, as Imam Malik said. Everyone makes a mistake and they get something correct. Illa sahiba hadha qabr. Except the inhabitant of that, of that grave. And he pointed to the grave of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So meaning that all, all of us uh, fall, fall into error with regards to Islam. Could be an issue of aqidah even. Could be an issue of, of fiqh. Could be an issue of ijtihad. Or could be an issue of speaking about an individual. That could be a mistake. And when you rush to just blindly follow without going back to that origin of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Mizan, the scale of the Salaf, that's when we, we fall into error and when we go astray and when we have mistakes that need to be rectified. And what's interesting is we find some statements of the Salaf, as we mentioned, those who preceded us, <coughs> or those closer to the Salaf using the term Salafiyyah and using Salaf, as we mentioned, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. But listen to this statement of Imam al-Dhahabi and he was describing uh, Imam uh, Daraqutni or he was, he said, uh, he narrated this on Imam Daraqutni. So it shows us that those who preceded us, that they used Salafiyyah as a descriptor and as an adjective of of uh, to describe individuals and to describe the pathway of following and adhering to the madhab of the Salaf. So Salafiyya has a precedent. Unlike the Ashari, the uh, Ashairah and Maturidiyya, they go back to, a, to Ashkhas, to individuals. And this is what you find of many of the uh, sects and the heretics, is that they go back and their origin of their madhab and their origin of their understanding and their deen is just to a man. And he could be a man of righteousness or a man of facade. He could be a man of sunnah or a man of bid'ah. But the point is, is that their name and they what they claim to follow is they go back and make taqlid, taqlid blind following of just individuals and personalities. And this is a very dangerous thing to take that as your madhab and to take that as your way of understanding of Islam in contradiction to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Imam al-Dhahabi, he said, 
عن دار قطني he said لم يدخل الرجل أبدا في علم القلم والجدال ولا جدال ولا خاض في ذلك بل كان سلفيا so uh, Imam Dhahabi actually said this about uh, Imam Dar Qutni and he said about him he said that he this man never entered into Ilm Kalam meaning uh, to be into uh, the theological uh, philosophical way of uh, of approaching the Islamic text by using your intellectual capacity in precedence to the text as a precedence taqdeem al-aql al al that the per that is to give precedence to one's uh, intellect intellectual understanding how they understand their philosoph philosophical background over the nasus now one thing I want to point out a fillah that's very important that doesn't mean Ahl Sunnah negates the intellect because some of us we get this understanding so we say no there's a hadith that's it no Ahl Sunnah min, min, min zaman al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they use their intellect Islam doesn't tell us to throw our intellect out but it's just that our intellect is governed by the nusus by the text the text the, the book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we can't, you know, if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala orders us to, to pray وَأَقِيمُ salah, we don't say, well you know, according to Plato's theory Aristotle once said that no, we don't take our intellect and then negate the ahkam of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala change the rulings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or use our intellect alone for us to make interpretive discourse over what has preceded us from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the way of the Salaf that we are saying as Salafis as Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah that we give a precedence to the of course to the Nas Nasus and we go back to the Ijma of the Salaf and that which they did not have Ijma on we take our precedence and, and go to the Salaf, as long as it goes in accordance with the Nasus. So the Asl for us is the Nasus, is the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ijma. And some of the Ulama, they say Qiyas, you know, by uh, making, or a Qiyas as Sahih, you know, sound analogy. And so it's very important that we understand what Dalil is so that we know what we're going back to when we talk about the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf. وَأَنْ أَبِي أُثْمَانْ أَسْصَابُونِي رَحِيمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى or I'll finish interpreting that, that, uh, that statement. So we said, he said about Daraqutni, he said that this man never, ever entered into you know, Alma Kalam into that uh, that uh, in, that type of theology, um, and nor argumentation or nor getting into debates and 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 arguing uh, and argumentation over uh, issues of the Dean and debating about creed and so forth. Nor did he immerse himself in those things. Rather, he was Salafi. That he was Salaf. Instead, he took the method of the Salaf. He hated and detested debating and that uh, having philosophical discourse uh, about those types of issues. Uh, and Imam, uh, also, Imam uh, Uthman as Sabuni, uh, Rahimullah Ta'ala said, Kanamin a al Athar, or it was related on him that he was one of the imams of the ethar you know the imams of of adhering to the narrations of the salaf and uh, uh, of the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam <coughs> and that he had lahu musannif fi sunnah wal itiqad as salaf and he had a book or he was a writer about the sunnah and the creed of the salaf مَا رَاهُ مُنْصِفْ إِلَّا وَأَعْتَرَفْ لَهُ And anyone who was just could only say 
these positive things about him. And so it shows us, Ahabat Tifillah, the importance of adhering to the madhab of the Salaf and that the Salaf, uh, many of them, they were described by the ulama prior as being Salafi, being Salafi and adhering to the madhab of the Salaf and that this is not something which is a negative thing. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Man dhanna anna, anna al-khalaf a'lam bil-haq anna al-khalaf a'lam bil-haq wa adillatihi o al-munadhira fihi min al-salaf wa huwa bimanzila bimanzilati min za'ama annuhum aqwam bil-ilm wal-jihad wa fatah al-bilad minhum wa kalam dhanneen tariqa min lam ya'raf haqiqat al-deen wa la hala salaf al-sabiqeen Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned, he said, whoever thinks that the, the, those who came later, those later generations, so if you think that uh, Imam, uh, uh, Imam of the, uh, Abu, ha uh, Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, that Imam, uh, or, or, or the Imam of the Maturidiyah Tariqah, Abu Mansur, or other than them, if you think that the, the Khalaf, those who came later after the Salaf, had more knowledge and more uh, and, and were more adhering adhering to the adhering to the truth and the evidences for it, that they had more knowledge of the evidences and that they were better at debating these evidences than the Salaf and that they were the the best, more superior in knowledge and jihad and you know opening up the world to Islam then a person who believes this then they don't know the reality of Islam they don't know the reality of the deen nor do they know the hal of the salafin asabiqin or la wala hal as-salaf asabiqin nor do they know the status of the Salaf who preceded. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.